Hello, this is Haku the Bean, and I'm here, finally, with the Dimensional Sublime. A very long Backrooms, well, technically, reality, that I started a while ago, but ended it, it, it early because I could not finish it within the, uh, uh, with the limited time I had. Today, I have no such limits, so let's begin. I will be starting from the beginning once again because as I did not, because, as, as, as you most likely forgot or have not seen the other video. If you liked the video, Please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. If you do not like the video, then you're about to waste what I am guessing is about, about an hour or two of your time listening to me when you don't like it, which just seems like a huge waste of time, and I do not suggest it. Anyway, let's get into it. The Dimensional Sublime. Warning, this page is restricted. Please enter valid credentials. Reason, you are not permitted to view this file as it requires a higher clearance level to access. And we log in as someone named Gary. I'm guessing an old person. The Dimensional Sublime, you're not supposed to be here. The Dimensional Sublime is the threshold between reality and unreality. It is a place where everything unwanted, untouched, and unloved is left to go. Description. The Dimensional Sublime is a mysterious its location consisting of three dimensions, three different sections found outside of reality and the back rooms. The Sublime seems to function as the junkyard of the back rooms and reality. Everything that the universe has no use for will be transported here. For this is not a place where one is supposed to be. The location's physical appearance resembles a large plane of indeterminate size with a cloudy weather pattern. There is no day-night cycle that has been documented, and the only recorded weather patterns are the sparse and subtle winds. In the wasteland area, which is the primary section of the sublime, the plane is covered with debris and unused remains of other levels and realities. Occasionally, one can find oases scattered throughout. Everything that is not used in other realities, whether it is a level, an entity, or an item, will end up here. The sublime is where, where realities and backroom levels go to be, for lack of a better term, recycled. Physical realities that end up here are eventually replaced by another plane of existence. <clears throat> Although Wi-Fi is non-existent, real broadcasts are amplified amplified to the point of being detectable from any reality. Any signal, weak or strong, can be picked up anywhere. A test was, con was conducted to uncover the true extent of this anomaly. A radio broadcaster was stationed in an oasis and scheduled to send out short pulses of waves, encoding information via Morse code. Radio researchers Receivers stationed in the front rooms and level 4 and level 399 picked up, up and decoded the information, thereby demonstrating that the signals do indeed permeate all of reality. Strangely, the dimensional sublime almost seems to be its own entity, with the way of the surface of the sublime, the vast towers of rubble in the wasteland, move and si shift in emergent patterns, even targeting the wanderers unlucky enough to end up here. The MEG has done numerous experiments with drones to investigate the sublime to find a cause for the apparent sapience of the environment. But the results have been inconclusive thus far, as the rest of the intelligence of the environment is an emergent property resulting from the watcher's control over the sublime. Place of Forgotten Things From time to time, one will see remnants of levels, and these debris, such as doors, windows, broken glass, fluorescent lights, and entire buildings out of dimensional rifts are falling from the sky. Sometimes landscapes like oceans, hills, forests, and deserts may suddenly replace a space 
once occupied by the sublime. At times, entire mountains will fall out of the sky as if it would, it is uh, ripped from the very ground they had manifested. One of the most interesting sins of the sublime is antimatter. If a piece of antimatter rifts to the sublime, then both the antimatter and corresponding amount of regular matter explode in a burst of pure energy, which will destroy anything in its path. Most people do not know the destructive, the true destructive power of antimatter, and as such, it would be necessary to inform explorers within the dimensional sublime of this occurrence. Ooh, that's kind of cool. It is worth noting that these these occurrences will only manifest in the wasteland area of the sublime, and as such, one should not worry extensively about their safety outside of the wasteland area. <sighs> You're not supposed to be here, but you ended up here. All things do, eventually. It is inevitable. Well, enjoy your new home. You won't be anywhere else for quite a while. Events. There are several events that occur here. Recovery. The recovery is a, is a deadly a class 5e event that happens exclusively in the e Wasteland area. When this event occurs, the sky will turn re red orange like the sunset, and everything on the surface that did not originate from sublime will start to melt and turn into dust, reducing everything on the atomic level. There are quite a few materials that are immune to this effect, though, and will remain intact. It is unknown when this event may occur, but this event is very rare. As such, one can still expect to encounter colossal amounts of uncovered debris in the, sublime, in the wasteland. There are multiple biomes in the sublime that are not affected by this event. If you do not seek shelter, then you will be utterly destroyed. Permafrost The permafrost is a deadly class 4e event that happens here. The event consists of the entire sublime freezing to sub-zero temperatures for a varying amount of time which means that at level or timeline is being restored to its original state. A kind of blue permafrost will form over all the surfaces. The permafrost does not seem to be a frozen form of liquid, but instead its own material. The probability of this occurrence is random, but the watcher can control when it happens and how. Like the previous event, you can sh and survive by seeking shelter in other areas of the sublime. <sighs> items. Due to the fact that all unused parts of reality eventually end up in the sublime, a list of items would be near or infinite. Suffice to say, one can find any item with enough searching, though most consumable items are unsafe to ingest due to environmental hazards and length of time that the item has been in the sublime. Entities. This, were, this is about where we stopped last time. The Collector. The Collector is a moderately intelligent and class for entity exclusive to dimensional or sublime. You may find many of them in the wasteland area. This entity seems to take the form of an ordinary garbage truck similar to you know, antiquated automobiles from the front rooms. When it's not an interesting state, it can be seen collecting debris that could not be recovered for consumption and further processing. When this entity sees a wanderer, it will. Well, will attempt to take it to the pit. The collector seems to be driven by an unknown on figure with a vaguely humanoid appearance. When it's in its resting state, the humanoid figure cannot be seen. It's not known if the truck is part of the entity or if it's just a vehicle for the humanoid figure driving it. Attempts to investigate the biology of the entity are ongoing. This entity can be found in the wasteland part of the sublime. This entity is immune to the events. The Pit The Pit is a highly unintelligent class 3 entity exclusive to the dimensional sublime, and although very dangerous, it cannot move. One can, may only find this is in the wasteland area of the sublime. You may find more than one of them there. Warning, do not approach. If you see this entity, stray away from it. Walking near it will cause us it, it, its monstrous jaws to open up and its horrific tongue to shoot out. Pulling any unfortunate wanderer inside. The entity consists of nothing more than a huge and monstrous 
his mouth, opening down into a gaping underground pit, hence the name. The mouth consists of two jaws with an almost mandible-like structure. It has no eyes and very sharp teeth fit into the gums of its its jaws. With an fit into the gums of this creature. The pit has scaly skin with a dark a grayish greenish color. And it seems to be some form of flowing tentacles protruding from the creature's strangely shaped aped lips. The pit is made of living tissue, organs, and a digestive tract. You have to disguise itself by covering itself with debris from the wasteland. It is a vi it is advised that one stays away from strangely shaped lumps of debris. This Andes feeds on the debris of recycled levels and timelines, with the debris keeping it alive and in constant operation. However, this Andy can still have a function for up to five weeks without food. When the mouth of the pit is closed, it is impossible to enter and it is advised not to try. It is important to note that the ND is almost completely invincible. Attempts to investigate the biology of and the are going. This entity can be found in the wasteland part of the sublime. This entity is immune to the events. <sighs> the Watcher. The Watcher is a highly intelligent and mysterious class omega entity, exclusive to the to the dimensional. Of sublime's and desert area. Warning: possible threat to of reality and the MEG. Not much is known about this entity. It has got some very anomalous properties based on the description given by the scavengers. The watcher vaguely resembles Cthulhu from Front Room of his literature. However, there are a few major differences between this entity and the fictional. Lovecraftian and creature. Firstly, the watcher is much smaller, being about five times as the height of a front room school bus and much slimmer. It has three eyes and tentacles instead of legs. It also has no wings as well. It is said that it wears a plain gray robe with a high collar, and the watcher's intentions are unknown, but it is hostile. Warning Do not engage. If you approach the watcher, you will immediately be transported to the void. The Watcher has complete control over the sublime and sees everything inside of its, its domain. The Watcher can control the events, the hostility of the entities, and is the only one with the ability to exit the sublime. Biology is unknown and remains so, as this entity is a cosmic level threat. This singular entity can be found in the desert area of the sublime. This entity is immune to the events. Abilities include reality warping abilities, physical telekinesis, psychological manipulation, also known as mind control, spatial fourth dimensional or angular provision, metacognitive manifestation, spatial teleportation. No more is known about the watcher. He is always watching, isn't he? Scavengers. Scavengers are a class zero in the exclusive dimensional sublime. They are at a human level of intelligence, capable of abstract thinking. They have a sophisticated language and a rich culture. They have communities and ways as part you know, of the sublime, but will usually travel in the wasteland in groups. Most of them will carry vast amounts of supplies. Their only purpose is to scavenge and collect things found in the wreckage of reality, and bring the newly found relics back to their communities in the oasis. Their culture seems to revolve around the philosophy that every item found in the wasteland is sacred. They seem to respect the things that they find, because those things come from a different reality, and it should therefore be preserved and studied. Because of this idea, their technological progression is at a much faster rate due to their ability to reverse engineer the technology they find. These scavengers are non hostile and devout of pacifists. Scavengers look vaguely humanoid, but are much small, shorter, and more stout. They are about three feet tall. They have grayish fur all over their skin, as well as pointed ears and four large eyes on their head. Oh, so they look like sloths to me. They also have retractable claws on their forearms. Their arms do not quite 
of the structure of a cubanoid, but it's close enough to the point that they can be referred to as such. Most of them wear cloaks and carry bags with their belongings. Scavengers will trudge endlessly through the infinite rem remnants of forgotten and reality, searching for the perfect souvenir. Attempts to investigate the biology of these entities are ongoing, but it's confirmed that they can be classified as part of the mammalia class. They are quite similar to front room species. They reside in the oasis. These entities are not immune to events, but they know where to seek out shelter. Life cycle. The following are the confirmed stages of a scavenger's life. Step 1. Embryo. This is when scavengers start to develop their bodily structure as well as, as organs and brain. Step 2. Newborn. Scavengers at this stage are without fur, but almost fully develop in all other er, aspects. Step 3. Infant. Scavengers have, at this stage have begun to develop advanced cognitive abilities and manual dexterity. Step 4. Youngling. At this stage, scavengers are educated and cultured by the adults of the community and are fully developed. Step 5. Adult. By this point, scavengers are completely independent and self-sustaining, but they still prefer to travel with a group. Step 6. Late adult. Scavengers at this point are required to find a spouse and reproduce, and become social outcasts if they do not. Step 7. Elderly. This is when scavengers take part in managing and ruling their communities, and is the last stage before death. Sandworms. But then we hear nothing about them. I think that might be something that they need to edit and fix. Anyway. Areas. Areas are located within the sublime. Within the sublime, there is a system of hierarchy for areas. Oasis can be found within the deserts, and deserts can be found within the uh, wasteland. Area 1. The wasteland. This is the main area of the sublime, and the first many initially encounter. This area consists of hard rocky soil formed with wreckage and debris. It is not known what the soil is made of, though some speculate it, it is simply is wreckage of millennia. Uh, compressed down and crushed to the point of pulverization. This area is filled with the wreckage and remnants of reality, and as such, it is possible to find things incompre incomprehensibly strange. Because of the nature of the sublime and the nature of the discoveries and things found on within it, the MEG has taken a great interest in the wasteland. More information on that in the description part of this document. Scavengers do not live in these parts, though all other entities, including the excluding the Watcher, can be found here. The area is always affected by the events, though the Watcher has the power to change that. Area 2 Oasis Throughout deserts, patches of oasises can be found. Within in the oasises, one can find an abundance of fruit trees, ponds, grasses, fertile oil, and scavenger communities. This is where scavengers spend most of their time, congregating and living a hunter gatherer lifestyle. This area is never affected by the events, although the Watcher has, ch has the power to change that. For reasons unknown to us, the Watcher allows the scavengers to live and thrive, occasionally even helping them. As the process is because of the way the scavengers worship the Watcher, the area is not affected by the events. Area 3 Desert Deserts are areas of the sublime consisting of nothing but endless sand dunes. With the occasional oasis throughout, the deserts are nobly hotter and more are than the other areas of the sublime. Throughout the desert, scattered like playing cards are small dope homes and, and ex excavation sites. During it to the site, I have revealed nothing as all traces of writing and records have been buried by the sands of time. This area is where the watcher resides. In one of the deserts, in the midst of the seemingly endless sand dunes, one can find a great pyramid. The, the colossal structure is about 500 meters tall. According to measurements by the scavengers, inside is where the Watcher resides, according to scavengers who worship the Watcher. He sits on a great throne, overseeing everything in the sublime. It's not known if this is true or not, as scavengers seem treated as a fate. This area is not affected by the events. <sighs> now we have an audio transcript.
This is Todd Anderson, an employee and documentation officer of the MEG. Through the Metro Supply, I has a lot of undocumented information and unpublished reports. I'd just like to clear up some things that may seem ambiguous due to the stark lack of unclassified information. Most of the information under this document comes from drones sent into the survey and research environment. Photos are taken around drones from high vantage points. However, a lot of the information in here comes from wanderers as well. Wanderers who got trapped here are, are eternally trapped, and so their only way of communicating with, an, with the database is through radio. Even though radio signals are antiquated by, at this, this point for some, it is their only option to contribute a final page to the MEG. The Watcher is a cosmic level entity in threat, although not Class 7. It's really worth, worth mentioning that the Watcher only has control over his domain. He can, however, choose what enters the sublime. Yes, we have communicated with the scavengers. They have quite a lot to say and seem to worship the Watcher. For clarification, the areas of the sublime are not sub-levels. They are physical sections of the reality that the sublime resides in. Well, what's the difference, you may be inclined to ask. Well, sub-levels are different than their parent levels in more than just a physical way. For instance, instance they may a, a be more anomalous properties in the, in the sub-level than in its parent level. A physical reality of the sub-level may be fundamentally different. Areas, however, are simply physically different sections within the same fundamental properties. Biomes, for a better term. There are many more entities from the sublime yet to be documented and officially published to this page, so do not feel so do feel free to expand it. Like what are these sandworms that you said the name of but never actually expanded on? Although I guess you can pretty much guess what a sandworm is. Have you ever played a Zelda game where you have those worms come out of the sand and try to attack you? That's probably about it. Anyway. Colonies and outposts. Most people do not want to be eternally trapped here, and as such, there are not nearly enough volunteers to establish an outpost. However, scavengers have cities of their own. Entrances and exits. Entrances. Entrance here is random as it is only the watcher that decides what is transported here. Similar to a level redacted, one can enter if one happens to no clip, just as quantum fluctuation manifests within one's quantum probability field, which is the official method that the MEG uses to send drones to the use of line. This only works if the watcher allows it to, however. Aside from those, there are no entrances or access points. <sighs> Exits. Approaching and engaging the watcher will immediately transport one to the void. However, this has not been entirely confirmed. Attempting to, to locate to no clip will, will not yield any results. And instead, one will simply hit whatever object they are trying to no clip into. How could you ever leave? Oh yeah, there was like wind hallowing audio, I turned it off because it was somewhat annoying. Anyway, that was the dimensional sublime. A reality where all things from other realities go to basically be recycled or die. Not sure which. That was shorter than I thought it would be, but it was still a very long video for me. Anyway, if you liked this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. If you did not like this video, then you wasted nearly half an hour.
It's been about 25 minutes so far. So, uh, I guess you actually did like it, and you're just telling me you didn't like it, it, it for no reason. Anyway, I'll be doing something else that might be a little bit longer than and I've been doing the last few days tomorrow. Or I might just do another normal like 5-10 minute video that I've been doing for the last few days because I've been really, really tired. I'll see you next time. Goodbye!